After exiting Palace of Darkness, dash down until Link is aligned with the top wall out of the pathway. Dash left until you are aligned with the right wall going up, and walk up until you are aligned with the bottom wall going left. Start your dash, then turn left. This Ropa can hit you out of your dash with bad RNG. Hold angle down left through the path, then move left to clear the next open pathway. Hold angle up left out of the path, then take a step up making sure you are above the wall on the left side, then start your dash and turn left. Continue the dash left and cancel it with an angle down left input. Hold angle down left through the start of the hedge maze until Link drops down a step. Dash left, then cancel with an angle up left input when Link is close to the leaf visual cue. Continue holding angle up left until you are at the start of the upper left open pathway, then move left through it. Once you clear the path, start your dash and tap down. Cancel your dash with a right input once you are at the bottom of the next open pathway. This rope can also hit Link out of his dash with bad RNG. Dash right until you clear the last block, then take a small step down. Start your dash again and then turn right. Cancel your dash at the wall and begin to dash down until the next wall. Cancel this dash with an angle down right input and walk through the last hedge maze. Once you are clear, dash down while holding the down input and cancel the dash with an angle down left input at the top of the mountain shadow. The safer movement to avoid the bird is to nudge the tree on the dash down, which will give you more space to cancel your dash to the left a little bit higher than normal. Continue dashing left until you reach the block, then exit the screen downward. If you happen to bonk on this block on the way out, you will get hit by the snapdragon, which will do considerable amount of damage to you. Move down until Link is lined up with the mountain slope, then start your dash and turn left. From the screen transition, move down until Link is aligned with the top of the statues. Start your dash and turn left, dashing into the enemy and canceling down once Link is aligned with the right rail. Depending on where the guard is, you can hammer dash immediately or you may need to take a few steps down first to avoid getting hit. For a safer strategy after dashing into the enemy, you can take a few steps down before starting your hammer dash. This will ensure that you don't get hit. Hammer dash through the pegs and cancel your dash when you are lined up with the top of the left skull. Dash left to the next screen. After the screen transition, move up a step just below the flowers, start your dash and turn left. Continue your dash left until you cut the first bush. From here you can cancel with an angle down left input or with a right input. Start your dash again and then turn down. Dash down until Link is aligned with the top of the second dirt hole on the left, then dash left. You can also choose to walk down and then dash left. Dash left until the first set of flowers, then walk down until you are aligned with the top of the big flower. Start your dash, then turn left. Once you cut the second bush, cancel your dash with an angle down left input, and then start your dash and turn up. From the start of the screen, you can walk left while pumping down above the tree, then move down until you are aligned with the top of the big flower, and continue the rest of the screen as you would optimally. There is a comparison video shown here on these two screens from walking versus dashing, and it's only really a difference of about four frames. Walk up and take a small step to the left to clear the tree on your right side. Start your dash and turn up. Cancel your dash right as you talk to the flute boy, which you can actually talk to very high, as this will get you closer to the flute dig spot. Here you can mash all four face buttons for the first four text boxes, then confirm the prompt with A and clear the last text box with L and R. Hold angle up left until you get to the bottom of the flower bed. Move left until Link is one pixel away from the bottom white flower. To ensure that Link is on the leftmost quick warp pixel, menu buffer to mirror. The left quick warp pixel visual cues are looking at the tree to the right. There is one pixel of grass going up above the right tree stump. Also, if you use the white flower just to the right of Link, there is one pixel of space between him and the left side of the flower. Ensuring that Link is on the left quick warp pixel, you are actually able to hold up out of the menu and shovel immediately without having to turn right. If you mirror at the rightmost quick warp pixel spot, the cues are the right tree stump is even with the right of the screen, and Link is aligned with the left part of the white flower. You will need to hold angle up left out of the portal and then realign with the dig spot. 
After grabbing the flute, move right to line up with the tree. Start your dash and turn down. Cancel your dash with an angled down right input at the bottom tree line and then exit the screen. Dash down until Link has cleared the bottom of the left tree. Dash left and cancel your dash as close to the far left tree as you can after the mountain slope. Dash up to the next screen. Hold B through the screen transition to keep Link's sword out. Move up and exit the screen on the top of the tree line to the left. Release your sword to activate spin speed, then move left while air pumping up to the ladder. Touch the bottom of the ladder to get the spin speed state and move off of it cardinally. Move left above the bush, then briefly hold angle down left to get below the mountain slope. Once you are below the slope, move left. Once you are past the bottom of the mountain, hold angle up left to get past the slope on the right side, then move up toward the grass patch in the flower. It is important to note that you must walk over or to the left of the white flower to ensure that you do not get hit by Usain Bolt, the fastest garden high roll. Hold angle up left past the flower and the next mountain slope on your right. After the slope, briefly hold up, then transition to angle up right and hold it past the guard until you have cleared the last mountain slope on your left. Move up past the ledge, then hold angle up left to transition the next screen. Move up to the fence post, start your dash and turn left. If you exited the previous screen on the far left, Link will not grab this post. Continue dashing left, then cancel the dash with either an up input or a down left input, ensuring that you maximize your dash, aligning Link with the left wall that is going up. Cancel your dash with an angle up left input once you reach the bird statue. Line Link up with the inside of the left path. This will actually get the bird to fly off of the screen on the right side much faster and do one of the following strats. If you want to activate spin speed at this sequence, Hit Y and B on the same frame to call the flute and slash your sword. Continue to hold B as the bird flies off screen. Make your way left out of the path and move up toward the stairs. Release your sword to activate spin speed, then touch the stairs to get the state. Make your way up and to the left cleanly as you transition to the next screen on the far right. This spin speed can potentially save 5 to 10 frames with clean movement. Strategy 2 is the same up until the bird statue cancel, which you want to hit Y and A on the same frame to begin your dash. Once the bird flies off screen, dash left, then stop your dash on the middle of the pink pathway and dash up. Continue dashing up and cancel once Link is below the pink tree stumps. Dash left, then dash up to transition the screen on the far right. By any chance, if you do not dash up directly in the middle of the pink pathway, you will hit the guard above. So what you want to do is dash left underneath the guard and exit the screen the same way. Dash up immediately, then once you are about a tile above the first guard, walk left. Start your dash and turn up, making sure that you are on the left of the right tree. Once you dash through the bush, walk left under the last guard, start your dash and turn up. Cancel your dash at the top with an angle upright input, then enter the next screen cleanly. If you accidentally mess up a dash here or do not have clean movement, you can slash the top guard on the left to line up underneath him and then dash up. Here you can either hold up and pump right or hold angle up right until you have cleared the grass platform on the upper left. Briefly hold up until you are aligned with the middle of the light grass patch on your right side, then start your dash and turn right. Cancel your dash at the far right wall with a well-timed menu buffer to the hammer. Dash down to the next screen. Dash down, then cancel your dash with an angle down right input right at the top of the tree line. Continue holding angle down right until you have cleared the tree. Hammer dash down through the pegs and walk left to grab the rock. Enter the portal from the left side or straight down toward the left part of the portal to get the quick warp. Walk left until you are aligned with the middle flower in the pathway up. Start your dash, then turn up. Cancel your dash with a down input. Start your dash again, then turn left. This dash cancel will ensure you avoid grabbing the tree or picking up a bush. Dash left through these bushes until you have cleared the last tree. Fairies and items can generate from these bushes, causing additional lag. Dash down to the next screen. 
Dash down and cancel the dash with a right input as you get close to the mountain slope corner. Dash right until Link is aligned with the left part of the pathway leading down. Dash down until Link is aligned with the top of the first set of benches at the middle of the screen. Dash right, then cancel with an angle down right input as you get close to the Thieves Town entrance statue. Hold angle down right, then align yourself at the bottom left part of the entrance wall and pull down. You want to actually pull down to open the entrance at the far left side, as this will cause Link to hit the left part of the wall on the way down and will ensure that you avoid getting hit by the Poe or what everybody knows as Ghosty Woasty. Dash up into the dungeon entrance. Walk up out of the door, then walk right until you clear the left rail. Start your dash, then turn up. Cancel your dash with a right input when Link is at the top of the rail. If the fire snake is not at the top of the screen, walk right, then once you are against the bottom rail, hold angle down right. When you hit the ledge, continue holding the angled input and tap A to side hop off of the ledge and then dash up to the next screen. If the fire snake is at the top of the screen, you want to dash right, otherwise you will run into the fire snake. Then as before, cancel with an angle down right input, tap A to side hop off the ledge and dash up once you land. Walk up as you pump left against the wall until you are aligned with the top of the wall on the right side. Start your dash and then turn right. Dash right, then stop your dash with a down input when you are aligned with the bottom right wall. Dash down to the next screen. If you notice the red Zazak is walking left, you will need to cut your dash slightly early with an angle down right input, then align with the right wall, making sure that Link is below the enemy, and then start your dash downward to the next screen. Continue dashing down until you hit the stairs. After walking up, hold down to the edge and then tap A to quick hop off. Start your dash immediately and then turn left. Either pump down while holding left or hold angle down left to place Link at the chest. Open the chest from the bottom right, cancel the text with L and R, and then dash right to the next screen. After the screen transition, tap up. As opposed to holding right, then starting a dash, which would move him off of the grid. By doing so, you actually give yourself a better chance on this second dash cancel to avoid nudging the wall on the left side above you. Start your dash and turn right. Cancel your dash when Link is aligned with the left wall, leading up the pathway and dash up. Cancel your dash just before the spark, then make your way around the left side of the statue. If your movement is clean, you will be able to start your dash going up at the top left part of the statue without getting hit by the spark, which actually maximizes your dash. If the spark is too close or you happen to have bad movement or a Zazak gets in your way, you will need to move above the spark before starting your dash up. Immediately dash up to the stairs, but make sure to pay attention to where the fire snake is on the right side of the wall. If the fire snake is low and heading off screen, you can immediately dash to the right or walk, stopping at the corner of the rail on the right side. The time difference is minimal. If the fire snake bounces at the top corner and is on the higher side, you will need to move farther up from the stairs, walking or starting your dash just below the top rail on the right, then stopping at the corner of the rail on the right. The reason for this is to actually reduce lag by making sure that the fire snake is as much off the screen as possible. Dash up to the wall and cancel with an angle upright input, sliding along the wall until the key door is unlocked and then snap into the doorway. Dash up until you are able to grab the key pot on the top right of the room. Move left then start your dash and turn down. You want to either align yourself with the torch on the right or slightly nudge it on the way down to set up for the key dash below. Once Link is aligned with the locked door on the bottom left of the room, cancel your dash with an up input, then start your dash and turn left to dash through the doorway. Move left out of the door, then immediately walk up until you have cleared the block on the left. Start your dash and then turn left. It's important to move cleanly and start your dash as soon as possible in this room. If you don't, there's an RNG where the blue Zazak can run into you. Cancel your dash at the left wall with an angle down left input and then snap into the door cleanly. Move left out of the door, but make sure you pay attention to the enemy RNG as you need to react quickly to which path you can dash left. There are three pathways to dash, top, middle, and bottom. At this point, watch the top enemy. If the movement from him is not angled down left, the path will be clear. As you are getting ready to dash on the top, look quickly at the bottom enemy. If he does not go north, continue with the top dash. You can use a step back movement 
which will delay enough time to dash on the top path and to avoid the anti-fairy. You can also use a sword slash buffer to get the timing you need to dash past the anti-fairy on the top path as well. If the top and middle pathways are blocked, you will need to dash on the bottom path, which actually does lose a considerable amount of time. A few additional RNGs are shown when you should dash down the middle pathway. Dashing immediately from the door without any other inputs will keep Link on the grid, allowing you to stop your dash on the god pixel of the conveyor. The god pixel will actually allow Link the chance to dash up without getting hit and to uh, continue through the door if the enemy's RNG cooperates. If the larger red part of the star enemy or Patrick star is in your way, you are unable to dash through that. So at that point, you will need to readjust your movement and dash again when the path is clear. The door at the end of the hallway is very generous when it comes to dashing through it. As long as you are at least one pixel away from the statues on the left or the right side, you will not bonk. If you get the god pixel, but the enemy RNG is going to block your path in the middle, take a small step right. This will actually delay the anti-fairy to make sure that the doorway dash is clear. Walk into the left spike at the top half and hold angle up left. This will give you iframes to get past the enemy instead of just waiting below for a clear path. Hold up and dash out of the room. The second iframe strategy is if you do not get the god pixel and the middle enemy RNG goes angle down right, you can actually boost off of the spike on the right side to get past him. Once you are past, move angle up left and dash. This will position Link to dash through the door successfully. Move up out of the door, then go into an angle up left input until Link is aligned with the corner of the blue peg and the key pot above it. Hammer the pot and then move angle up right, aligning with the middle orange block or between the spikes. Start your dash and then cancel out the wall with an angle up right input. Continue this angle movement until you unlock the door and then snap into it. Hold right out of the door to cancel stair leg, then immediately go into an angle down right input until you have cleared the right side of the table. Move down, then slide angle down right as you lift up the pot and hit the switch. This will also align Link with the right side of the wall. Move up and then snap into the door. If the grasshopper moves right, you are able to quickly turn at the corner of the table to slash him. After the slash, if the grasshopper continues to follow you down, you are able to throw the pot up to kill him. You can also use the hammer to kill the grasshopper, but this will lose a few frames. Dash right to the next screen. This room, you actually want to dash right to the next screen as well, but the screen transition is longer here and throughout the first part of the dungeon as well due to the connected rooms just like in Desert Palace. So make sure you time your dash correctly. Hold right out of the door and immediately menu to the bombs. This will give you a brief moment to see the grasshopper RNG at the top of the screen. If the grasshopper goes up and around, you actually have enough time to immediately place a bomb down at the corner of the divider, then you can sword slash twice for timing. Line up on the left side of the lit floor and then throw the bomb up when it begins to blink, then dash left out of the room. If the grasshopper goes right and down, place the bomb down in front of Link, then immediately slash up to hit him out of the way. Pick up the bomb and proceed to do the same strategy as before. For a safer strategy, if you need to sort the grasshopper out of the way after placing the bomb, you are able to move between the top part of the tables throw the bomb up and immediately dash left out of the room once you are aligned with the top rail. Dash left to the next screen. Dash left to the next screen as well, but this screen transition is actually longer as well, so make sure that you're timing your dash correctly. Hold left out of the door, then transition to angle up left to the top door and then snap into it. This room has a few different visual cues to know when it's safe to dash down. Once the top left spike moves past the halfway point of the blue tile, you are able to start your dash. The other visual cue is after the top right spike hits the wall on the right, you can begin your dash. Use whatever is most comfortable to you. Hold down out of the door and if the path is clear, start your dash and then turn right when the conveyor has you lined up with the door. If the enemy has high right RNG movement, you are able to time a dash right as you are just below the top part of the split Patrick star, saving you around 15 frames. This same high RNG you can also walk to be safe. 
move right out of the door and utilize a menu buffer to the hammer only if you see the right enemy's movement go up or down. This will actually help you see the clear pathway. Move up and around the divider, then start your dash once you are aligned with the door, and then turn right. If you see the right enemy stay in the middle, save your menu buffer to hammer until you are around the corner in case you need to use the hammer on the enemy if he moves in your direction. Hold right out of the door, then move up on the first conveyor. At this point, if you do not grab two bombs at the hammer jump and have less than six bombs, there is one underneath the top left pot. This bomb is faster to grab than the restock room and swamp, only if you don't need the last set of arrows. Transition to angle upright when you are about halfway up the first conveyor. This helps to avoid stepping on the third conveyor, which is actually moving down. Hold this angled input through the door. Rubbing against this door frame will actually not slow Link down. Hold left to cancel stair lag, then immediately move down to hammer the Zazak. Lift up the large block, then dash down through the door. Hold down until you are aligned with the door, then start your dash and turn right. Be aware that if you go too far down, Link will grab the large pot instead of dashing. Dash right from the door, then cancel with an up input to unlock the first cell. Dash up, then cancel with a quick angle up left input right at the key lock and unlock the second cell. Use the same movement to unlock the third cell as well. Open the key chest from the left side, then talk to blind and cancel the text with L and R. Hold angle down left to align yourself with the middle pathway and dash down. After talking to blind, you can maximize your dash by stepping left, starting your dash and turning down, but this movement is very tough to do and not nudge the cell door on the way down. Once you are aligned with the left door at the bottom of the room, cancel your dash with a left input and then dash out. You can also elect to walk up through the jail cells and this only loses about 15 frames, but it is a lot safer. Just make sure that you are aware that you may need to slash a few enemies that can get in your way on the way up. Also Link will grab the key lock portion of the cell if you try to dash through too early without opening it. And you can also bonk on these cell locks, losing a considerable amount of time. There is a comparison shown here on a few different strategies and a few RNGs that can happen. Clean dashing versus walking, and then uh, dashing with one accidental bonk, and then walking with one slash or enemy getting in your way. Dash left into the next room. Here you want to dash left directly from the door without any other movements to make sure that you stay aligned with the grid so you can successfully hit the key dash. Hold left and hammer the first peg and open up the big chest on the right side. Cancel the text with L and R and then hold angle up right to align link with the peg opening to dash out of the room. A way to check if you had a good big chest room is if on the way out of the room as it's transitioning you do not see any fallen tiles. If you happen to accidentally bonk on the peg on the way out, you can realign yourself with the middle peg that is down, start your dash and turn left to bonk into the big chest, allowing you to get over the pit. Walk right out of the door, but pay attention to the blue jelly RNG. If the jelly is not electrified, line link up with the middle line of the two conveyors, start your dash and then turn up. Cancel your dash with a right input at the top when link is aligned with the door and then dash out. If the blue jelly is electrified, you need to dash up on the left conveyor and then stop your dash at the corner of the second set of conveyors that are facing up. Walk up and then dash right through the door. If the blue jelly is electrified but you have sword beams, line up in the middle and kill it with your beams then proceed to do the same strategy as before. If the blue jelly is electrified but placed in the middle of the conveyors and you do not have sword beams, you will need to line up in the middle and sword slash twice to buffer the electricity timing. Continue this room the same way as before. Hold up out of the door and air pump to the right. Move up to grab the arrow pot, then take a slight step up to grab the arrows, then transition to angle upright all the way through the door. Since this is a north facing spiral staircase, nudging the door frames on these will not slow link down. This room has many different strategies to choose from. For the optimal strategy, tap up, then hammer dash to the right. Canceling your dash with an angle down right input as you hit the pot. This strategy will also kill the cell post if he gets in your way. Move down on the still part of the floor and then snap into the doorway. 
By any chance, if you happen to hammer dash north through the staircase, you can get stuck in an infinite loop. And what you need to do to get out of that loop is when Link goes down the stairs to the previous room, mash the Y button to hammer to get him out of it, and then proceed to go back up the stairs to redo the room. The second strategy is to hold angle upright out of the stairs and then dash toward the pot. Cancel your dash with an angle upright input as you get underneath the pot, then hold up to hammer the pot and the Stalfos if he gets in your way. The third strategy is to safely walk, only losing about 10 frames or so. Out of the door, tap up to stay aligned with the grid. Start your dash and then turn right. Cancel your dash with an up input once you are aligned with the top door and then dash. Blind is actually a scripted fight and can be very simple with practice. The only way to damage blind is damaging the head. Blind has three phases and it takes nine hits to win the fight. Damage taken in this fight can be by blind, the laser, fireballs, and the floating blind heads. Hold up through the door and dash toward the top, canceling before the top of the wall. If you don't dash successfully on the first frame, just continue to hold up and walk. Alternatively, always walk into the fight. A frame perfect dash only saves about three frames. Facing down at blind, hold out your sword and line the tip of it up with the top of blind's head. Cancel the text with L and R and then release your spin. This will ensure that you do not sword spin after the first poke. Slash your sword and hold it out to poke blind for hit number one. Move down closer to blind and then use the same poke strategy for the next two hits, ending phase one. After the first head moves down, move right to avoid the fireball and line up wherever comfortable at the top two tiles on the upper right side. Hold your sword out and then when the head comes back around, dodge the fireball and poke blind. This will send Link to the right. Slash your sword down and hold it out as you move left to poke blind again. Slash your sword down and hold it out moving into blind to poke her again ending phase 2. After avoiding the first fireball at the top, you can dash left from the top of the wall, bonking into the left wall which will actually align you perfectly to start phase 3. At this point you can choose to either hold your sword out to poke blind or slash your sword. Do whatever is most comfortable to you. Move right to avoid the fireball and then slash or poke for the first hit, then move to the top of the wall on the left side to slash down at blind again for the second hit. Move right, then turn around to slash blind for the third time, ending the fight. A great way to see if you had a really good blind kill is to see how far left out of the light blind is on the final hit. The further left out of the light, the faster the final hit was. You can hold the wall at the top to reduce leg and then collect the heart. Since we defeated the boss at the top of the screen, we want to make sure that we catch the crystal where the shadow of it is covering Link's eyes. This will result in a faster crystal cutscene with the Maiden. 